Hey guys, I'm Dave Boyer, aka The Swamp Man, aka Mr. Boyer or Mr. B. Uh, it's Monday, August 21st, 2017, a day I've been waiting my whole life for. I'm here at Floating Mill Recreation Area in Tennessee and waiting around for the total solar eclipse. So I chose to come here because it's on the path of totality. Uh, as we see here today, this morning, still got a couple of hours, but this morning, the total solar eclipse is going to come across uh, the coast of Oregon and make its way down south and east, um, eventually crossing through where we are and finishing up its landfall in South Carolina. This path is called the path of totality, which means that 100% of the sun is going to be covered up by the moon. So the difference between 100% covered up by the moon and 99%, which is where, you know, somewhere else where we could have been, is, is that that little bit of light coming around the, the moon blocks out all of the coolest stuff that you can see in a total solar eclipse. That cool stuff is called the corona. We'll be talking about that a little bit later. All right, so let's start by uh, talking about all the things that are moving out there in space. Uh, everything's moving in space, but for a easiness we're gonna say that the Sun is kind of the center of our solar system and it's stationary that's a false assumption because it's actually moving around in the Milky Way galaxy the Milky Way galaxy is spinning around out in space also but um, for this purposes we'll simplify it and say the Sun is stationary in the center of our solar system and then we have our planets that are revolving around the Sun so every year the earth makes its path around the Sun and it takes 365.25 days to make one trip around the sun. And that gives us seasons um, because of our tilt there and the different amounts of light that are hitting it like we'll talk about in class. Uh, but what we really wanna focus on today is the movement of the moon. So the moon is also revolving, but it's revolving around the earth. And as it revolves around the earth, um, it gets into different positions. And those different positions are going to give us the phases of the moon. So for example, about two weeks ago, the moon was on the other side of the earth. And the light from the sun was going around the earth, hitting the moon, and it was lighting the whole side of the moon up that we could see. It's called the full moon that we'll study. Um, pretty awesome sight to see. But as the moon revolves around the earth and makes its way to other positions, we see different amounts of that light that's hitting it from the sun. And at this moment, the moon has made its way around into the opposite position. It is now in between the earth and the sun. And when it's in between the earth and the sun, all of the light from the sun is hitting the far side of the moon, the side of the moon that we can't see from our position here on earth. And this is called a new moon. So right now up in the sky, the moon is up there. It's out there in the middle of the day, but we can't see the moon at all because all the light coming from the sun is hitting the back of the moon or hitting the earth. And none of it is hitting the side of the moon that we can see. But what's gonna happen today is that the path of this moon as it orbits around is gonna come perfectly in between where we're standing here in about Cookville, Tennessee on Floaty Mill Park and the sunlight that's gonna be coming. So as the day goes on, we're going to see the moon start to cover up the sun and block its light out a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time until around 1.30, 1.29 p.m. here, it's going to cover up the entire amount of the sun that we can see. All right, as we were talking about the phases of the moon and the position of the moon, I mentioned that two weeks ago we had a full moon where the light was hitting the side of the moon that we can see, 100% of the moon that we can see. Um, and then it took two weeks for the moon to get to the other side of the Earth and in the position of the new moon that's going to give us our uh, solar eclipse today. So two weeks to get halfway around takes about four weeks to make it one trip around the Earth. But the path that the moon takes isn't completely level. It isn't completely in line between the earth and the sun. It's actually tilted up about five degrees. And that tilt, it makes a huge difference on the occurrences of eclipses. If, we, if it were in line, like we were kind of, we would make a bad assumption of, then every time we had a new moon, we would also have a solar, a total solar eclipse. It would be awesome. Every two weeks, we could come out to a place like this and see a total solar eclipse. 
people would probably get sick of it and they would start thinking that it's not as cool as something like today where people have been waiting 99 years for a total solar eclipse to move all the way across from coast to coast here in the US. Um, but that five degree tilt means that only every few rotations around the earth uh, does it actually get into the path where it blocks the light and creates a, a total a, a solar eclipse. And most of those solar eclipses are called partial eclipses because some of the light from the sun makes its way around the moon and can still get to the earth. But when it comes in that perfect line and gets in and blocks 100% of the light, we get a total solar eclipse. So what I expect to see happen here in about two and a half hours or so is that it's going to start to get darker and darker and darker as the moon blocks that light. And then at 1.29 p.m. today, it's going to block 100% of the light from the moon. So 1.29 p.m., that's middle of the day. Sun's up, it's bright, it's hot, it's going to be 90 degrees today here in Tennessee. Um, but yet when that uh, moon blocks 100% of the light, it's going to be like turning to night just like that. And we're going to see the temperature drop down a few degrees. Uh, the animals are going to be confused by it. The nighttime animals are going to start to wake up like it's time to get up. The daytime animals are going to start to go back into their uh, period of rest at night. Uh, we might even see some stars out here over the lake because it's going to be that dark without the sunlight. The stars are out there right now. You just can't see them because there's so much light coming from the sun. But as the moon blocks the light from the sun, we might even get to see some stars out there. Now we won't be able to see the moon because the moon is in a new moon phase and there's no light hitting the side of the moon that we can see. Um, what it's going to look like is a black hole almost. It's not going to have the gravitational pull of a black hole, uh, but it's going to look like this just black spot covering up the sun. And that black spot is that moon that we're waiting to see happen. And right now it's on its way, it's, it's moving across, um, it's about to catch up to the sun, it's going to take a couple more hours, uh, and this happens really, really fast. I mean, think about how fast things are moving out there in space. The earth is moving really incredibly fast, the moon is moving incredibly fast as well. The shadow, that path of totality that I showed you before on the map, it actually is going to move across the United States at about 3,000 miles per hour. So people in Oregon, which are going to get the first look at the total solar eclipse, there's only about an hour between when those people see the total solar eclipse and when people on the coast of South Carolina get to see the total solar eclipse. Now the times get a little bit messed up because of our way of doing uh, time zones. It's actually going to happen in Oregon at 10 o'clock in the morning, which is 12 o'clock here. Um, and then also one o'clock on the East Coast. So it sounds like there's this six hour total solar eclipse across the US, but it's really only a one hour period where that total solar eclipse is racing across uh, the whole United States at about 3,000 miles per hour. It's fantastically cool. Zoomed in on it, I'm gonna talk first. All right, so uh, I wanna talk about why NASA thinks it's really cool to see a solar eclipse, because you know, I'm not a NASA expert, I'm not hired by them, I'm just a science teacher and I want to see a solar eclipse because I think it's going to be a really beautiful thing. I think the setting's going to be awesome. I love space. I love the idea of these things moving around so fast and something happening like this drastic change from daytime into nighttime over this period. Uh, but what NASA really wants to see, and they've been doing this with every solar eclipse pretty much for about 40 years, is that they want to study the sun. But the problem is that the sun is really, really, really bright. And as the sun is going through all these explosions and shooting off all this energy out into space, uh, the light from the sun makes it so bright that they can't see all the fine details of what is the sun, what the sun has. Even from space, they can't see it because it's so bright. But these unique experiences where we have these total solar eclipses, as the moon comes in and starts to block out uh, the light from the sun that we that they are um, is kind of overwhelming the, what they're trying to see when it gets to the totality and it blocks out all that light they can see what's immediately around the sun just like earth the sun has an atmosphere it doesn't have an awesome atmosphere like ours where we've got all this oxygen to keep us alive and all the carbon dioxide for all the plants instead it's an atmosphere of hydrogen and helium that's being released as these explosions happening but this atmosphere is called the sun's corona and the only time that the NASA can study the corona really well is during a total solar eclipse when the light from the middle of the sun is blocked out and you can see the gases surrounding it. 
that's what I'm most looking forward to today is that two and a half minute period that we're going to get from 129 to 132 when the light from the sun gets completely blocked out and we're going to be able to see that corona, that glow of the gases that are surrounding it. All right, so it's been about an hour and a half since the last time we uh, filmed this segment. Sweated through a shirt already, but I got another one. Uh, it's 12.01, right at the point where the total of solar eclipse is supposed to start. So for about 90 minutes or so, the moon's gonna slowly just position itself more and more and more over the sun until we hit that total solar eclipse period. Uh, totality at, starting at 1.29. Um, so this is the point where we're going to start looking at the sun a little bit, which brings about some of the dangers we studied earlier in the year with the electromagnetic spectrum. You know, the sun is this fireball of energy shooting out uh, radio waves and microwaves and infrared, which are pretty harmless, but also a lot of visible light, ultraviolet, uh, your uh, x-rays and, uh, and gamma rays. And those are what are really, really harmful for you. So you'd never want to stare straight at the sun. Uh, so you've probably heard about people trying to get the solar eclipse glasses and it blocks out pretty much everything except for the light that's there from the sun. So I'm going to switch from my sunglasses which are not enough protection. I haven't been looking at the sun yet with them. Switch from the sunglasses to the solar eclipse glasses and take a look at the sun. See if we got any covering yet, any blocking of the light yet. Just on the top right little corner from where I, my perspective is, I can see a tiny little bit of shadow that's already started right there on the sun. That is really cool. It's almost like this tiny little bite has been taken out of the sun. That is fantastic. Let's see if we can see that on the camera. All right, so we're about 10 minutes in now, and during that 10 minutes, we've seen it go from like a dot of darkness on the very top right corner of the sun. Now I'm starting to be able to see the roundness of the moon blocking out a little bit of a, a piece of the sun. It's pretty awesome. I mean, this is an amazing day. The sky is clear. I'm really excited about it. You know, this is gonna last for about three hours. About halfway through, we have that two and a half minutes of totality. That's what everybody's most looking forward to. But we don't want to sit and just stare at the sun for three hours. Not because we'll be bored with it, but because even with the solar eclipse glasses, um, you want to limit your exposure. They say about three minutes and then um, take a long break before looking at it again. And I've been kind of going with a few seconds at a time, not for three minutes. Another way to safely view the eclipse without eclipse glasses is to make a pinhole viewer. My mom actually made this one. It's a NASA design, designed to make be made out of a cereal box. Uh, but it's kind of got two parts. You just got your, your regular box and then you cut out a view, uh, viewing frame. That's the part that you're actually going to look through with your eye. And then right beside that, we have um, the same kind of size cut out, but it's covered up with aluminum foil. And then she used a tiny little pin to poke a hole in there. So the idea here, I'm going to turn my back to you. Um, but the idea is that you want to not look at the sun. You want to face directly opposite of the sun. But the light from the sun is going to go in the tiny little pinhole and it's going to hit the back of the box. And as you're looking through, you'll be able to see the, the image of the sun on the back of the cereal box. I'm going to take a look. The sun looks really small on the back of the box, but you can definitely, I mean, it's really clearly done and you can definitely see the little piece of the moon that has moved over top of the sun. It's a pretty neat way. I mean, it's like a, uh, a free, basically, solar eclipse glass um, and, and perfectly safe. You're not actually looking at the sun. You're just looking at light that came in and hit the back of the box. Uh, I really thank my mom for making that. It's pretty cool. We'll be taking a look at that throughout the day. All right, so it's about 12.50 now, so this is about 50 minutes in. Um, really, the sun's looking just like a Pac-Man, like a crescent moon, basically. The sun looking like a moon, which is crazy, because it's the moon that's covering up the sun. Uh, we're not quite halfway there yet, so it's not quite half covered up, um, but we're getting there. This is pretty amazing. We've only had one time where clouds came and blocked uh, our view of it, um, but it's been pretty spectacular. I'm gonna go ahead and take another look. 
Switch into my uh, Eclipse glasses. Oh yeah. So the sun kind of looks really small. It's pretty interesting because when we actually uh, see the sun, not that we're staring at it normally or anything, but we don't see a lot of the actual ball of the sun. We're seeing that light that's coming off of it. And that light makes the sun look really, really big. And the sun is really, really big, but it's also really far away. During this eclipse, when you put on the glasses and you can kind of block out a lot of that peripheral light, you're only looking in at that center part of the sun. Uh, makes it kind of look pretty small. And as the moon is coming in, the moon looks just as big as the sun, which is really how an eclipse happens. The moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, but it just so happens that it's 400 times closer to us as the sun. So they actually appear in the sky as about the exact same size. And that's what gives us the chance of seeing that total eclipse. Let me check it out again. Ow. Ow. Oh, wow, that is amazing. You can almost even see the curvature of the moon as it's starting to come in there. This is really spectacular.